Right, we're live again. Uh, hi, everybody. This is Valor Swanson um, with Customer Experience in the Cloud, uh, where every week we talk about various aspects of customer experience in the cloud, uh, as well as cloud technology, uh, customer experience, and of course, um, Asian experience. Now, today's show is called Turn On That Damn Camera. And um, if you wouldn't have turned on that damn camera, you wouldn't have seen that my hair was extra crazy today for the purposes of uh, rewarding you for turning on that camera. And so we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of a topic hopping today as we normally do, then tie it all together and, and uh, leave you with three points. Uh, but a little bit about me real quick, kind of remind some of the folks that haven't um, heard me here before. Uh, again, Ballard Swanson, um, been in the industry for 30 years, 20 years of it on the customer side in the US, 10, uh, 11 years here in, in the UK, London, uh, doing global consulting on it. I used to run 17 contact centers for Comcast, and everything that was involved with that, you can just imagine, uh, you know, the, 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 what boot camp that was for becoming a consultant. Um, but anyway, so uh, today, let's get into the show here. So today, we're, we want to remind everybody the three. So, of course, I got my little Chancellor Rapper hat three here to remind me, to, to remind you guys that last week we spoke about sociotech, which is uh, looking at um, complex systems uh, as a whole and how when you work them together, uh, you can get better results. So Google that concept and, and try to think about that when you're putting together uh, your teams that are working from home or working from the contact center or the mix or whatever it might be. Also, doing an assessment on who wants to work from home so that you have people that are engaged and happy in a situation that uh, typically has not been the norm uh, in uh, in the industry um, of, of contact centers. And then finally, number three, do a proof of value. You know, you don't have to do a customer contact center as a service in the cloud uh, by going full hog. You can you can get yourself something where maybe a team of ten people can do it, do it from working from home, in fact, uh, and understand the level of security is gonna increase, uh, the flexibility is gonna increase, and the costs are gonna decrease. Uh, and then once you realize that it happens with 10 people, can you imagine 100 people, then 1,000 people globally, so forth and so on. Uh, and it's just a really way, good way to get back into, go not get back into the game, but get into the game where everybody's gonna be here in the next uh, two to three years. So today's show, turn on that damn camera. All right, now, just to kind of really take this home, I, I wanted to you know let you guys have a, day in the life of, a, of an agent. And so you understand exactly what I'm talking about when I, what, what it means by uh, making a difference by turning that camera on. And so we're, there's gonna be like a little three minute video, just, just cartoony type thing. Uh, stay with me. Uh, it, it can, um, for some people, it can rub the wrong way because you know they, they, I love contact centers. So it does uh, took a poke at contact centers, but you'll, you'll get the point when it's over. So just three minutes, bear with me. We're gonna turn the video on right now, a day in life at a contact center. <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. And I believe it was a volume that we require. We're going to need some volume. Okay. So if we don't get the volume, what I'll do is I'll sit here and I'll kind of ad lib. Basically, what, what, the, what it's saying here is that being in a context center is like being in jail. Uh, actually, it's, it's a step um, above jail. Uh, I'm sorry, step below jail is what the joke here is. And, and that the warden or the supervisor is basically having to walk up and down uh, the, you know, the halls here and telling people to uh, actually you know, make sure that they're signing out for breaks and, and so forth and so on. Uh, I'm not doing this any justice because there, there's so much commentary in here that really brings it home. But anyway, and then it goes on to describe the different types of calls that, it, that an agent is dealing with. And, um, and the, the challenges that they're having as, as they're trying to support these customers in their requirements. Um, and you should hear these funny voices. You know, We'll make sure that you guys get the link uh, so you can hear these, these voices, uh, the explainer, the crier, um, and, and so forth and so on. And you can see the reactions here of, of the agent's uh, facial expressions uh, when they're getting these different calls. Um, this thing then segues to, I think this last woman here, and, and this is, she is, she's a hoot. She is, for example, she goes, uh, the, the lady goes, I want to talk to your manager. And then she goes, uh, I am the manager and then, uh, I managed to get this job. I mean, so she has a serious attitude. And if you look at her face, look at her face right there, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of action going on there in her face. And, um, I, I wanted to show this video to, uh, really illustrate just the, the, the dynamic, the dynamic range of communication that's occurring just in the people's faces while they're talking on the phones. Um, so to bring the, bring the point home here, 
Now, this kind of closes out here in a second, uh, but I, 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 I will try to emphasize what this also was showing. So the first question was, what did you guys notice? And I would hope that in the comments that folks would say, well, we noticed that there was a lot of facial expressions going on there. I guess the underlying theme also, the subtext is that there's a, there's a tough environment that those agents are working in. So, you know, they're kind of bemused and amused and shocked and angered and, and tired of hearing all these different stories. You know, an agent takes call after call after call after call, and that comes through their, through their body language. Um, and so, but what is the common theme that these customers are actually having to go through um, when they're actually reaching out to, to, the, to the agents? And I would suggest that it's basically going to be, I wanna feel like I'm talking to somebody that I can trust. I want to be talking to somebody, I feel that there's, there's empathy going on there and I wanna feel cared about. And so juxtaposed to that, you've got the agent on the line who's making all kinds of roly-poly eyes and little snarky remarks, you know, and you know, I guess it's called frying your eggs when you make the spit salad, you're like, you know, like, yeah, whatever. And it, that doesn't, that's not congruent with, with how um, they're supposed to sound to the customer, which is trust, empathy, and care. And in fact, we're gonna call these from now on, you hear the first time live on Life Size, uh, um, is tech, we're gonna call it a tech KPI, the trust, empathy, and care number. So we're gonna come up with all the formulas and stuff and actually try to validate this. But uh, so what is your tech score? What type of tech does your company have? Uh, now we're not talking about, again, we're not talking about wires and cool software. We're talking about trust, empathy, and care for your customers. And, and how consistent are you demonstrating that uh, via, the, via the phone? With all those facial expressions in the background, right? Happening there. Um, so how would you measure that, right? And how would you ensure that, that there's congruency behind the body language and the way and what you're saying and showing to the customer, I mean, and saying to the customer versus what you might be showing to the customer? Because there's been studies out there that show that when you're when you're talking to a customer, you know, via video, your body language becomes a lot more congruent with what you're saying. So the call becomes a lot more genuine, so that there's a lot more. Uh, there's a higher possibility that the customer is going to trust you because they see that you're not rolling your eyes and you're not laughing at them and you know doing all those things that the last woman was doing. So, if you think about that, if you think about that, what types of calls are those going to be? Now, with today's you know technology, we have uh, we have AI, we have chatbots, we have you know, we got all kinds of stuff going on there that's taking like oh change your address, uh, you know help me with you know getting my 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 you know my new bill uh, uh, sent out to the new address. Um, or you know how much, how many minutes of time did I use this month? All these little transactional calls are actually being handled by AI and robots and, and self-service means. So what's left over? You know what's left over is probably a lengthier call that requires a human that is going to be a lot more emotive uh, and complex, or emotive and complex. And so you're going to need somebody that is going to be not only congruent in their body language, but also, but you know, sound that they're providing that trust, uh, empathy and care to that customer. So now we have then out of the calls that are left over, the lengthy ones, complex and emotive, the ones that are super complex and super emotive that really require potentially somebody to guide somebody to visually show them, to assure them that things are gonna be okay, that the problem's gonna get fixed, I'm gonna help you put that shelf together before your wife gets home. You purchased from IKEA, and you you know you washed it all up, uh, and and get you through this because I'm here with you. So, with that, there is a technology called Pivot to Video, or of course, as you know, FaceTime and WhatsApp and everything else. These kids are using. I'm using. Everybody's using it. I mean, it's ubiquitous. Everybody's using video now. So why aren't the contact centers universally using video? You know what's what's going on? What's the scary thing about video? Um, you know, how can we use video just as easily as I pick up the phone right now and talk to my son, you know, via FaceTime uh, and give him some sage advice because, you know, he'd prefer to see me versus actually, um, you know, me send him a text, which would take me for to type, to type it, uh, take me for me to type. Anyway, now back to our, uh, our theme here about the body language and all that stuff. So, so you probably heard that 73855 rule, right? So that is uh, the rule of communication, right? So 1971. There was an expert, Albert uh, Mayrabian, I'm not saying that correctly, 
But uh, he asserted that only 55% of communication is body language and 38% is tone, 7% is actual speech um, and the spoken word. So, you know, the body language and facial expressions had a lower, have a lower, um, uh, you know, percentage of impact on, on the communication that's occurring. But um, hold up, wait a minute, let's put some uh, face in it and uh, think about what happens when the facial expressions come in. So I think there's, um, yes, we have, a, we have a new flash here. <laughs> We have a new flash uh, that, that research shows that that number literally has gone up. So, you know, here's all the scientific research uh, that we've got. But but the reality is, is that in all seriousness, that um, they've kept studying this over the years since 1971. And of course, with all the visual technology out there, they can certainly do it and compare it and, you know, correlations and all that other statistical stuff that they, they like to do. And uh, we are up to 90 to 93 percent of communication comes from not the words you're using, okay? So now all of a sudden, okay, now I might be scaring you from turning on the camera if you think about it, but but the, but the reality is why would that be the case? Because when somebody's in distress or needs something solved, it can happen when somebody can see the other person. So just to make it even more um, you know, complex about the latest research, did you know that there are 7,000, over 7,000 facial expressions that the human can make in the form of communication, 7,000, 7,000, 7,000. <laughs> and um, so I was just thinking like, where, where is the, uh, where is the 7,000 count uh, face dictionary when you need it? So when your wife or your partner or somebody's giving you that, that dirty look, you know, you can look up, you know, how dirty it is on the dirt scale face meter uh, definition in the, in the, in the face dictionary. I mean, 7,000, it's just, it's astounding um, that there's that many micro, expressions happening at any given time uh, when you're communicating with somebody. So what does that have to, what does that hold factoids and science and everything have to do again with turning the camera on? Um, so a little quick story here. When I was uh, back at, when I was a, a call center leader back in the day, oh no, when I was an Asian back in the day, uh, they would tell us to smile and dial, smile and dial, you know, because the, the customer can hear your smile through the phone. That was banged in our head over and over and over again. And then when I became a manager, I was like, yeah, I can't wait to tell them that. So uh, I would be managing by walking around and to make sure that those dang agents were smiling while they were dialing and uh, let the customer hear your smile. You know, some of the crazy stuff I would say. So again, you're using visual coach, cute. You're saying visual, uh, you know, you're using visual words to drive a, a, a sound so that the customer can feel that empathy, trust and care from you uh, again uh, as, a, as a way to, to illustrate that the power of, 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 of using your body language to come through on through your voice. Now, finally, you might you can actually steal this one. So finally, what I did is uh, when I became a quality manager, I actually took the, um, the the quality calibration process that we used to do. And I took my quality team. We used to call them the quality police back in the day. Uh, and, you know, we try to be cool because, you know, the police are cool, aren't they? You know, they're your friend. So the quality police actually, um, as we called them, but they weren't the quality police. They were, they were quality control. It was just as bad. Uh, we got folks to volunteer to come into a room and we would have them take a live call and we'd actually video them, videotape them. Yes, I said tape. That's how old I am. Videotape them and then have a, a, a some some of the peers come in, some agents come in and watch the video on the uh, on the big TV there and then score them on their body language. And the point of doing that back in, what was that, 97? No, I don't know, back mid-90s, was so that they could ensure that there was a congruency between the body language and how they sound it because you will naturally sound a lot better and and you know drive that uh, trust care and empathy stuff if if your body language is, is is doing that so that's how important the visual medium is now if you want that trust um empathy and care to to happen um you want it to happen where you have an opportunity the moment of truth so when the customer is, is having an emotional situation that you're resolving with the most effective emotional resolving mechanism, which is a visual connection. OK, uh, getting them to get something technical working that they normally couldn't uh, get uh, working, getting them to put something together. So and so on. So I'm going to pull up some slides here in a, in a minute and basically demonstrate to you how this can be done and what you should be looking for if you're considering turning on the camera. So the first thing you want to look for is when you turn on the camera is make sure it's all in one unified cloud solution. Now, without getting into some kind of, you know, demo here, we trying to do a little side selling. 
uh, but this does happen to be our platform. Um, these are some of the things that you want to look for. And specifically, I want to point out, is the video component native? Meaning, basically, like here, on this particular platform, the agent doesn't have to go anywhere. There is no other screens. It's one screen. And rest for everything. Every single everything in one screen, including the video. So that's very important because you want the agent effort to be low. You don't want it all clunky where they're trying to get the video going and get the customer video going, so forth and so on when it's just right there. So unified, native. The next slide then is that you want to talk about potentially what types of use cases can you use this for? Because even uh, I would think that the CTO and the, um, and the you know, if, heck, anybody that's kind of worked their way up to that top level in the contact center industry is still going to be quite a, quite resident, uh, resident on um, uh, on actually doing it because, again, they've spent 99% of their life not having video in the contact center. But there's all kinds of use cases out here. For example, somebody having a, a bookshelf technician in their pocket that helps somebody speed up that process. Uh, it's shown that uh, reducing customer effort increases a net promoter score, which increases organic growth uh, and, uh, and market growth. So you've got a situation here where you've got uh, people in pain that need to see somebody that helps them. You got a situation where somebody doesn't understand how to stick a plug in a car uh, with this new fancy car that they got. They want to, you know, charge it up. Uh, and this, again, this is a real company out here in Europe that they actually, if you have any type of problem with charging your car, you can just call them uh, and they'll video, they'll go for the video to help you. And then finally, if I'm about to sign $500,000 or pounds worth of a mortgage payment, I want to make sure I'm staring the guy directly in the eyes and ensure that I, you know, I can trust this person uh, as we're sharing a screen and sharing the, the paperwork all there together. That, that it happens. Now, what's the end product of this, of these cool use cases? Well, uh, one of them is brand loyalty, uh, lowered customer effort, which drives that brand loyalty, but also cost savings. So there's a uh, large utility here in the UK. Next slide. We, we actually did a case study uh, and I'm, I'm very, you know, I understand this very well because I used to work, and I worked in the US, I worked for Comcast and we used to have truck rolls galore that were unnecessary. But the bottom line is we took it, we took about 20% of their contacts uh, that did turn into truck rolls. And we said, if we had an agent there that had the, you know, trust, care, and empathy, trust, empathy, and care, and all that, and we're actually guiding the customer through how to check their boiler or do the meter reading or whatever it is, that we felt that up to 20% of those contacts could be resolved, and so did they, uh, via a video. Now, at a 80 pounds per truck roll, about $100 per truck roll, we're talking about 225,000 pounds or almost $300,000 worth of savings uh, and a happier customer because nobody wants to wait to two days from now for you to come look at my heater so I can get some heat. Meanwhile, I'm boiling water. I mean, really? Why do I want to stay with your company when, you know, Johnny X power company can just handle it on the video. And so why would you want that company to do that before you think? I mean, seriously, the, the technology is here now. You're not only going to make the customers happier. You're going to save in the field and that, and it's going to be a self-funding project because that amount right there in this particular case would have more than paid for the deployment of uh, the ability to be able to pivot to video. All right. So we're kind of wrapping it up now. Um, so um, I want you guys to think about this, right? Uh, what use cases does your SMB or enterprise uh, potentially have if they were able to do that? And what impact would that have on this customer's perception of you? I know I'm going way over today, but you know this is very important because I don't think people understand the power of this and within the ease of actually being able to do it and the impact on the customer uh, perception of you as a company because you've taken the time to care enough to have this option available. Um, again, I want to point out, what if your competition does it before you? Okay, do you want to do you want to know that because your customers are leaving because they're you know it's easier for them to deal with things through the through the your comp competition that helps them pr uh, pre during and post sale of a of a service or product. Um, and um, again, what's going to be the impact to your brand? So three takeaways, guys, three takeaways. Where's my hat? Where's my hat's on the floor? Sorry, I got to rush today. Um, I'm not going to put it on, but um, I, know, I know that looked crazy, but sorry. All right, so the three takeaways are ensure that you have enough use cases that, you know, they're not frivolous little use cases like, oh, it'd be nice to see the customer. No, 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 no. This has to have a return on investment. Um, and, you know, there's people like me, you can call me, I can help you, you know, extrapolate those out. The next one is, again, thinking about how easy is it to pivot to video? You know, you don't want duct tape and chicken wire and toothpicks holding your platform together so you can pivot to video uh, and, and it just looks crazy and the customer and the agent's all unhappy because it's high effort. 
Uh, you don't want that. Don't 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 go down that road. You'll just mess it up for everybody because they'll think the pivot to video thing is not good. Um, so last one is you can start small. I always say that start small. Remember the third third thing here is start small. Say it again. Start small and do it with professionals that know what turning the camera on because there's a whole other bunch of things that we could be talking about. Like how do you monitor people in video? You know how do you manage it? What do they wear? You know who do you pick? There's all kinds of other like hygiene factors that need to be addressed. But for the most part, I want you guys to understand the power of visual communication, the power it has on emotions and people's view of your company, the impact on your bottom line, what if your competitors did it first, and then it's easy to do, you can do it now, start small, get some professionals to help you through that process, and then turn that damn camera on, guys. If you wanna know more, check out the links that we have. Please share this as, if, if you can with your colleagues, as crazy as I am, and, and but I think the messaging is good here. People need to hear this. Uh, and until next time, guys, life size, uh, your life. Take care.